Beauty of Kids Kids No Resk. Kids No Resk. There's caves all over this place and there's a, a rope bridge, very very long rope bridge. Now we're just going down the steps. The steps are windy. I think that's to break your walk. Because if they were not winded, they'll be too steep. And that's where we're going on that ropeway. There's a horseman coming. One man and his horse and a dog following him. It looks like a white horse and a white dog. All the caves there. There's a viewpoint as well. Caves, caves, caves. Firstly, we have to go down these steps, which zigzag around. And then you go to those caves. Loads, loads of caves. There's no way you can view all these caves in one day. No chance. One word to describe this beautiful. The nice thing, you don't pay to come here. You don't have to pay to go on the ropeway. It's free. Going these caves, you're gonna need a few days here. I admire the beauty of this place. That observatory place is sitting on a rock. See, there's caves everywhere. Standing to count them will be pointless. You just have to go and enjoy them. This is beautiful. But it's a long walk from the main road, this. Here you definitely need a 4x4. Four four. You need a car here. If you don't have a car, I mean, you can still walk. I mean, I walk and those guys gave me a ride. Now I'm with them and I showed them this place. Amazing how the um, people who used to live in this cave used to walk because this bridge is a new thing. Look at the caves. There's a church, some more buildings, and more and more caves. There's loads of them. Loads of them. Look at the road bridge. Ah, I'm impressed. This is nice. This is wonderful. This is lovely. It's beautiful. As they will say in Russian, Krasivo. And here's the first cave, right. Wow. Let's go and see this cave. I'm going, I'm going. Uh, I think uh, maybe mountain goats are staying here. And there's a hole up there. Uh, there's a pretty big hole up there. Let's explore this cave. Here there's a hole, but for safety, they've put an old ladder with some metal wires just to make sure nobody falls in there and start putting a claim on the already fragile economy. It's warm, it's big. Lovely, as Delbo will say, lovely jubbly. This is definitely lovely jubbly. I came from there, from up there, my friends parked their car. And then I went inside that cave there. And now I'm going round to the church. Check this cave here. The caves are clean inside. I think for tourism's sake, that's why maybe they try to keep them clean. You know, to see the beauty of the country, you really have to walk. The most beautiful places, you have to walk to them. If you don't walk, you can't see them. We started walking on those steps. Oops. Ooh. Uh. Mm, the beauty of walking. Sometimes you get pricked by these thorns. You cannot go everywhere by taxi. I'm not saying don't use a taxi. Use a taxi to get to the town. And once you get to the town, walk. And when you walk, if you don't know where you're going, 
Stop. Ask the locals. Is there a town? They know. But they don't know everything. The donkey. Give me a wave. Yes, 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 yes. That's good. There are a few of us here. Uh, Russians and we got uh, lovely fresh water. I think that's drinkable water. See the mountain, the caves all around us and inside here there's drinkable water after you've had a long walk. It's coming from the mountains. Very very clean water to drink. I will keep on walking. I will keep on walking until I find my way. It was quite good when I met the, the family there, my husband and his wife and the son, because they didn't know about this place. But I met um, this um, young lady called Lucien. I was talking to her and she said she's a guide in this country, in Armenia. And I said, OK, where are places to go in Armenia? She gave me a list. So I went through that list and then I started exploring more. And now I find a lot of things in this country. And now finally at the church. See the church? It's a good walk from the bridge, from the first caves, after you have walked through that bridge. I will say 10-15 minutes, but if it's raining, I will say uh, don't come. This church is built differently from the others. I will show you when I go outside. I don't know how old is the church, but I'm going to ask. This is different, more like a house or a school with four walls. So I've just found out that this church was built in 1668. That's in the 17th century. 1668, wow. That's a long time. Built hundreds or thousands of years ago. I wish they had some information written here on a board, but there isn't. Let's see the church from this angle. When you leave the church, you must turn around and leave the church backwards. You cannot go frontal. You have to go backwards. And that is the entrance of the church. Let's go around the church. We finally have the year when this church was built. 1665 and the rest is written in Armenian. If you look on top of that building, top of that old ruins, it's got a sculpture. I think it's a horse but here they're saying it's a cow. The nicest thing with this church is that there's a river running very near. So if you're thirsty or you want to wash your hands, you know there's a river just next to it. It's only uh, four or five meters away. Or if you want water to drink, then you have to go back where we came from. But it's not very far either. It's um, maybe 10, 15 minutes away. No, sorry. 10, 15 meters away, not minutes. Excuse my ambiguity. Back on the wobbly bridge. Well, it's metal, it's quite safe. It's just great when you're up here. It feels wonderful. This is truly remarkable to see. One thing I've realized with Armenian people, they bury their dead near churches or on churches ground, like these um, medieval caves here. Isn't that a beautiful sight to be laid to rest? It must be wonderful. And they always have these plots of land to bury the whole family because the family is like kept together even after death. And that is something I have never seen anywhere. It's just great. Town, cemetery, medieval caves. I'm standing on a hill here. Not on a hilltop, but high up on the hill. You can still go up there, but the ground is uneven. So I have to be very careful. That's their town over there. Just in front of those hills and I walked from there to here it took me it took me about 40 minutes to get here and that's the this is the cemetery where they laid their people to rest they rest as families here look at all the caves there's loads here are some dogs behind me I am gonna go and see because there's another nice place over there where the dogs are I don't know whether it's a good idea or not I think the people who look after this place are staying here there are dogs there chained, so I'm not going to go any further. But they're littering the place badly. The place is full of litter. It looks so dirty here. It's 
worse than the other place. If they could just keep it clean. I'm still standing. I'm on top of a hill here. Let's look. The city, the town, the mountains, the caves, the hills, the stones, the rocks, everything is here. Valerie is only four years old. That's his mom, Kesna, and his dad. Stas. Uh, Stas, yes. Ksenia. Uh, yeah, Ksenia and Valerie. Valerie is simple. Yeah, Valerie is not even four years old yet. Two more months to go. And he went all the way up the mountain there. This kid is born a traveler. The parents said this is his first traveling and going up the mountains. It's just amazing how he does it. And because I cannot speak Russian, he goes, why can't he speak? He thinks I can't speak at all. He thinks I'm, um, I'm a mute or, or somebody who's struggling to speak.